thanks to TDC and Parker and for, uh, for hosting us here and giving us a chance to, uh, to talk about the sorts of things that we, we think about. Um, uh, these are actually the, the kinds of conversations that we have in, in the office, as I mentioned before, we and I work together. Um, so we talk about these sorts of things, about like what rules uh, are made of, how they got there, whether it still makes sense for them to be there. Um, and then I think that we also spend some amount of time trying to figure out where to get lunch. Um, but uh, I didn't know there was a terrific example of that, you know, carry all the way through to the conclusion. Um, so what I brought here. It's actually not a design project of my own. It was this uh, historical research project uh, that I had been thinking about for a number of uh, a number of years uh, and uh, began uh, working on a few years ago. And the uh, this was originally going to be a, a post on the, on the blog. I thought this was just going to be some scattered thoughts. Funneled together into a couple of paragraphs of text, um, and then I discovered that this is actually much, much larger. Uh, this idea that uh, letters can operate as uh, security devices seems like a, a kind of obscure uh, notion, but there are a lot of examples uh, of this. And I, I like letters that go out and do things. I like I like letters that are jobs. Um, so. Um, one of the, uh, I think one of the most familiar, also the oldest of the examples of letters working in this uh, capacity uh, is this, this is our signature. Um, this is the original the padlock made out of letters. Um, and it's, like, it's a pretty clever idea, the sort of leverage, the kind of inherent organic weirdness of having a uh, human body and muscles and bones differently and turn it back into an identifying uh, 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 feature. Um, it also, when I think uh, unavoidably, gets caught up in uh, being an expression uh, of our personality. Uh, there's a whole branch of you know, sometimes questionable uh, study uh, called graphology that tries to extrapolate someone's personality And these sort of, uh, questions about uh, handwriting and what it says about someone uh, came to the forefront of the news cycle uh, in January 2013, rather unexpectedly, um, when this fellow, Jack Newton, uh, was nominated And as with any cabinet appointment, there were questions about this person's uh, fitness for the position, uh, whether his previous uh, connections to investment firms would uh, create conflicts of interest, what the plans he had, and was he really going to do a good job. This is the, the kind of conversation you try to have. Then a reporter uh, was looking through some documents left over from Lou's uh, tenure at the bottom of Jesus' staff and noticed his signature. <laughs> <laughs> and very quickly and completely, this story got very silly. Um, and for uh, the better part of the week, we were all talking about Jack Lou's signature. Now, no other uh, member of the cabinet uh, or the legislature or the executive branch really has to worry about what their signature looks like, except for the Treasury of your Secretary. So the Treasury of the Secretary of your Treasury. Uh, because this person's signature appears on every dollar bill. And the economy had just crashed, like it hadn't crashed in decades. And 
this sort of like smash splinting of a signature being on our money and carriers around that this being the stuff that our company is made of. Like, no, no, no one could, could handle this. And the story just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And eventually, the president, what kind of president, had to acknowledge this. I had never noticed Jack's signature. This is the president of the United States talking here. I had never noticed Jack's signature. And when this was highlighted in press, I considered it my offer to appoint him. Jack assured me that he is going to work to make a hazy plot of the letter in order to make a currency should he be confirmed as such a president. Uh, now, I am not a scholar of presidential history, but I am pretty sure that no president had ever called someone out in public for their handwriting, but it did actually happen. Um, and Lou was, in fact, confirmed uh, as the Treasury Secretary, and he went off to the room somewhere and practiced, presumably, um, and came back with this. Um, I think that first word is Paul. Um, we can agree with the North Atlantic, we do not have to that. Um, but this brings us to, uh, to the place where uh, a lot of our, uh, we spend uh, much of this time in the, uh, the design and the uh, defensive design of money. Uh, and there, uh, from a broadly speaking, there are going to be two kinds of, uh, of, of forgery that we're talking about. Um, the first being fabrication. This is a sort of making up of something that wasn't there um, to uh, be a kind of imposter or something that has uh, that had a value, usually money. Uh, and one person who uh, spent a lot of time uh, and a lot of great profit effort into uh, fighting this kind of uh, this fabrication form of forgery uh, was this fellow, uh, Benjamin Graham, uh, who, uh, apart from being a statesman and philosopher and an author and, uh, and a scientist, uh, was also a printer. Uh, printing was part of pretty much everything he did from when he was, I don't know, like 16 years old until he died. Printing was always and he was also the, you know, as uh, part of that, he was the uh, the official printer of the state of Pennsylvania. And in the colonial period of the United States, every state just looked after itself uh, in issuing its own. Uh, it would pick up the, uh, the denomination uh, and, uh, and decide over how, uh, how often to print and issue money. Uh, so once they would know, print shillings, the next day they print dollars. And I had no idea how to work this out, but that's what they did. And uh, one of the more sort of well known devices that Franklin used was this nature printing uh, technique where he uh, took a leaf out of, off of a global tree and uh, used that to make a, a printing plate. This sort of using nature itself was kind of fingerprinting from the back of it. Bill. And this uh, process was so uh, effective uh, that Franklin shared with only one other printer in the state of New Jersey uh, also used this technique in the back of bills. He did not trust anyone else with this thing that he worked out. Um, but this was not the only technique that he used. Um, what uh, shows up actually much more frequently were actually typographic devices. Uh, in a number of the uh, bills, was State of Pennsylvania uh, that he and, uh, um, and it is a part of all sellers uh, used uh, showed this this funny um, sort of loopy falling over itself uh, of semi script that sort of forty Spanish mill dollars value gold so and so on and so on. This was uh, a typeface that most likely Franklin bought while he was a teenager and he was apprenticed to printers in London. And I don't know why Franklin bought this. Uh, he wasn't anywhere near any kind of official capacity to print or anybody. Um, perhaps he just thought it was cool and decided 
take it home. But at that point, he must have realized that he had this case of time that no one else anywhere nearby had. You know, the next, the next closest place they had was a profit person. So it was not exactly exclusive, but it was as close as he was going to get. And he leveraged that to be uh, something that would make uh, these bills hard to forge because you just can't find this that anywhere. Stanley Morrison once tried to figure out where this typeface came from, uh, and he couldn't. At least he couldn't find the entire story. Uh, he was able to uncover this tiny place called the, uh, the Grover Foundry, which is later absorbed by uh, more well known foundries. Uh, but somewhere in the uh, early 19th century, this space was lost. Um, so it's disappeared from. Um, but having a sort of near exclusive title was you know, not enough. Uh, frankly, kept thinking of more things that you could do to make, uh, to create things that other people could not. Uh, one thing you'll notice here in this bill from uh, essentially you know, from 1771 uh, is this word invented, uh, which they kind of pretty crudely made backslope. It's like a kind of back rotation. Quite how this was done. Uh, but then they got to the company uh, piece of work. Um, and this is combined with this, uh, this is a broker uh, script that he found. And if, uh, the more you look at this, you see that they're, they're actually, uh, the sort of deployment of all these ingredients is pretty uh, more subtle than you might realize. There's this kind of chunky homemade. This uh, script from the year before, uh, combined with this, uh, or some two measures of the cast on the file italic, and the room that goes along with it. And then the, the line above it actually mixes this backslope, uh, this homemade backslope, and the regular off the shelf Roman together in the same word. Uh, <laughs> so just the first three lines of this of this note are in line shape. Uh, and really, at first, we really don't know one part of it. But the more you look at it, you can see just how hard it would be to reproduce this thing. Uh, part of uh, Franklin's political career uh, was being uh, ambassador to France from the uh, newly uh, created nation of the United States of America. And as with everything else, printing was a part of this activity as well. And uh, one of his responsibilities as the American ambassador was to make passports for uh, Americans having you know, coming into France uh, to give them official documentation that they are legit, they didn't, uh, that they are they are in here. Um, and this would be an especially lucrative target for forgers who could get a lot of money for a fake passport like that. And to make this a Difficult, but also uh, difficult to support, but also attractive. Uh, he worked with his uh, colleague in Cal, uh, Simon Pierre Fournier, to cut a custom typeface um, that you see here. Uh, rumor has it that uh, Franklin sketched out a few letters, uh, and Fournier took it from there uh, and created this typeface, uh, sent it over to Franklin, never counted. Pleased with how this job turned out, that he referred to this script as a little Franklin um, script. There was, there was a bust of a Franklin factory for decades afterwards. Uh, there was one uh, a nice touch of this that uh, uh, I really like. If you look at the first and second lines, is that J. Benjamin cuts right through the capital T of the line below it. Um, this is Completely like, beyond impossible to, to do uh, in letterpress types. You know, it would make forces the kind of impression that this is hand lettering, and obviously it isn't. Um, the uh, trick that 
Frank I used here was to set up two chances, one of which had the first, third, fifth, seventh, and ninth lines of text. Another one had the second, fourth, fifth, sixth, and so on. Uh, and it just ran this through the press twice. You could do all this overlapping stuff. Uh, and unless you figured out this really simple trick, you would be left scratching your head figuring out how you could ever print something like this. So as I mentioned before, uh, every state in the colony is just Uh, and no one else really had the wherewithal to like, hire a you know, fancy big name designer to get the other typefaces. They just had to make do with what they had in the shop. Uh, and one of the most uh, resourceful uh, all state printers was in Maryland, the Green family, of uh, uh, Jonah and Glitter and Catherine Green uh, uh, and their son. And the Technique that the Greens used over and over again came to be known later by the scholars and historians as secret marks. And a secret mark is a deliberate flaw that is built into the design or the execution of something um, that goes unnoticed. And uh, the forger doesn't notice this flaw and inadvertently does it correctly, that would be the thing. Um, and uh, many of the, the tricks that the, the Greens put in had to do with the time and how it was made. So, in this word, indented, that second D is actually not a D, that's actually a little bit of a key that's been turned around. Uh, but if you were to read it really quickly and to set your time in secret, print your money and no one notices, you're probably going to just roll right over there and not see it. Um, some of these are more obvious uh, than others. Uh, pretty much every time London is mentioned, the characters are turned upside down. Uh, lots of the rotating passes as well. Uh, a few of these are more, more subtle. So if we were to build up there, the, the baseline of serifs, the first one, the left one of serif, when the gallows were filed off, the right one of serif, the second one has been filed off. Um, uh, and in this case, Someone's taken one of the grains took a file to the second G and cut through that hole. Uh, just to make this just one uh, very, very small flaw put in uh, put into this block of tech. Uh, and to be sure that I was seeing something that was actually deliberate and not some uh, variation of printing, uh, I looked at at least three copies of each one of these notes you know, to be sure that this was actually what was intended. And, you know, This is definitely my uh, favorite example of a play of my woman. Uh, if you look at the word gold, you'll see that there's something a bit different about that. Um, in other more, you see regular garden variety gold. In gold, that's actually a zero. Gold style zero. Uh, you can confirm that because this was printed in 1770, and elsewhere on the bill, you see uh, the zero, which is more conventional. People have been writing about the Green family and the uh, super detailed analyses of every bill they ever printed. It's something like 50 or 60 years, no one has ever thought of that one. I actually contributed to the body of knowledge of the American history. Um, there are some other things that uh, I think that I, I'm just Looking at this this eye, looking kind of uh, pretty normal, and then this eye that's kind of not shoved off to the uh, off to the side. If you think for a moment about what it would take, uh, the kind of effort it would take to take it down, so it's like a 10, 12 point 
piece of pipe and saw through uh, part of that. That's already going to be pretty difficult to do. We have to break it over and over. Um, and then getting it into the chain, showing it over to the side, and getting all of this to stay put for thousands of impressions. Um, that's, that's kind of impressive. Um, but uh, this also shows that one, uh, one of the Devices that the green is built in, um, to, and in most cases where they would either you know, alter some of these letters or do anything like that, down or hack through something, uh, or, or otherwise substitute, um, there would there would be either in the next word or in the line above or the line below an unaltered version of that same letter. There is the, sort of the control, as it were, the ball is nearby, so that you know if the two G's are right on top of each other. Uh, this, this is lower case I use it right there so you can make a comparison and see what's supposed to happen. Uh, well, step five goes through Roman 48. Uh, well, thank you for that. Old style italics, uh, uh, lower case italics was developed. Stages with kind of lowercase a you see on the right, the big sweeps are popping over in the back, uh, and the great long edge shape. Unfortunately, uh, because this thing is a little bit long. Later forms of multi italics take a more practical approach and take their shape uh, uh, to the sibling of lowercase m, the first one you'll see there. Uh, there's a lot of that jansen. We come back to the 1770s and uh, this one third of a dollar note from 1774. Um, the denomination, by the way, was set up state legislature and thought of what they could do and thought that they did one third of a dollar. But anyway, um, if you look at the one, two, three, fourth line down, uh, right down in the middle there, uh, it says the bills of exchange. Except that doesn't say exchange. That H is actually B. The idea here is that if this old style H is going to get mistaken for a B, you want to stick a B in there so people will mistake it for an H and stall over that. Uh, so these are not bills of exchange, the these are bills of exchange, or I'm not sure how you pronounce that, but um, I think this is my favorite uh, uh, snarky thing to throw in forward. Uh, next door in Virginia, uh, uh, that's a senator who unfortunately did not sign any of the work, so we can actually know who this is, uh, uses a similar uh, kind of approach, um, but this time, but, but also with some kind of, I think it was sort of decoys. Um, in the first line, it's supposed to say, this bill is $60, but that's really clearly not a BB. That's a QB. Uh, and I suspect that this was put here uh, as a, a sort of conspicuous, uh, over conspicuous um, uh, trick for a forger to latch on to, saying, aha, I've solved all this, uh, I'll swap out the beat, put in a key, aha, you can't trick me. That's actually not the track here. The track comes a few lines later in the word trick. Franklin was uh, ambassador to France. Uh, 
He took his grandson with him, Benjamin Franklin Bates, and sent him to uh, to be uh, apprenticed in the art of punch cutting by Edouard uh, Didot, the uh, nephew, I believe, of Fermin Didot. Uh, and when Franklin and his grandson came back, uh, they came back with uh, walked from the Didot in four days, uh, the making of Foundry. Uh, and this is a note uh, for three ninetieths of a dollar. We have got to have the, um, from the Bank of North America, which is one of the new ones that comes to create a common currency for all the states. Um, this was printed by Bank, and I thought it was recorded who had this title. Um, likely that it was, it was Bank. Um, he didn't get to complete his training under Vito, um, uh, but it would have known enough to cut some number of letters. Um, I have no idea what's going on here, just so you know. I can tell you this is probably the weirdest type that has ever shown up on any kind of American bank of ever. Um, I don't know if it's coincidental that these blues on things like the and M uh, and other letters are the reminiscent of that bluey script that his grandfather made. Uh, as a teenager, but here it is, the sort of the, the, the kind of grunge style, 200 years before the fact. Um, plus, it's accents. Um, the the um, uh, This uh, uh, venture of Bank of North America did not make it very far. I think it was one of the two notes that there were, there were uh, issues by that. And it's important to know that for many of the examples we're looking at uh, were issues while the war was going on. Um, the, uh, the war between the American colonists and the British uh, went on for eight years. Um, and the armed hostility began in April of 1775. Three weeks later, Yeah, that's 
this is the only part of the one that really did actually went and did actually manage to uh, win the economic side of this, uh, of this battle.
and they were going to just like the others with no special security device built in. But because this denomination was smaller, these could now be uh, part of a transaction between strangers, which is an essential component for uh, counterfeits to be passed. You have to get this from someone that you don't know or don't know very well. Uh, and people figured out very quickly how easy it was to forge these notes. And uh, I think by 1818, uh, 300 people had been executed for forging these notes, uh, where it's called it in the white notes. Um, and hundreds more were uh, sent off to the prison colony of Australia, uh, which has some interesting implications for the history of Australia, which is actually a really sort of a tangent of the time put in here, but trust me, it's fine. Um, and again, uh, so the, the Bank of England had, had basically replaced one economic problem with another and added this tragic social aspect on top of it. Uh, and then in 1819, uh, the Society of Arts, Manufacturing, and Commerce took it upon itself to commission and publish a report on, on how to make banknotes harder to forge. This spectacular Victorian long winded kind of page. That's basically what they're talking about. Uh, and they took uh, commentary and testimony and suggestions from uh, 19 different people in the field of gravers and printers and uh, in the typefacters, the Anthony Gossam, and the Caslon, um, on what could be done with the background to make them uh, better to uh, just more secure. Um, uh, this engraver, uh, Richard Williamson, uh, who uh, had been working on this new device that you get the geometric lay, uh, or something called the Rillian, uh, which created these, these concentric, super fine uh, patterns that we observe now, uh, recognize as being a part of the design of the currency, up to the very, very same time. Uh, his suggestion was to uh, not actually begin with the design of the bill, just leave. Money in any way, it looks 
I mean, it is what you want like a newspaper rather than a thing that you might need to buy a newspaper. This is it's actually this. Uh, and this was understanding this is way beyond the pale uh, for the uh, the bank. Um, and then they in fact ignored everything that happened before uh, and decided that these notes were just fine. Thank you very much. Um, we will just carry on. Uh, and these white notes uh, went unchanged for I think 120 years. Um, they the, a few elements moved around, um, uh, but it was essentially the same uh, for a very, very long time. Um, uh, and then in, during World War II, uh, the Nazis launched what they called Operation Bernard, which was to uh, on a very, very large scale forge these notes and flood the British uh, economy with it and, and crash their uh, the, financial dimension. Um, exactly as they had done with the American colonies uh, previously. Um, according to the Bank of England, uh, so the official story is that exactly the one Nazi forgery made it through all the other um, Actually, the Bank of England was filtering these out of circulation into the 60s. Um, thousands may have been hit through. Uh, but Hanter's idea of uh, putting letters on bills, that were, or putting very, very tiny letters on bills, maybe, uh, or before, uh, did actually get it done later. This is uh, a very uh, tight close up of what you find on a five panel field right now. Um, you pull this, pull this out and get as close as you can. You'll see tiny, tiny, not very well printed letters. Um, uh, this is what you'll find on a ten dollar bill, and unfortunately, this is actually probably get printed. Um, it's hard to say. The end of the day. Thank you. 
confused. And I, I think I'm on board with that. Um, this is this is awesome. I think that for a little while, I think we had to look like this. Um, but all the uh, feature is sort of neoclassical And in this one dollar note, we have the embodiment of history. Just literally taking you under her armor and imparting with them. Uh, which uh, the, today's lesson includes reading the Constitution of the United States, in the first 132 words of it. And uh, this is not a uh, tie. But if it were tied, it would be about two and a half point. And I've seen the bill in person, and this stuff is clear as day. It's astonishing um, what they did on the bill. Uh, so uh, it's hard not to think of those kind of crazy mockers plan uh, looking at this bill. The other idea is that it's going to be a little bit more. I'm going to go on a little bit of a tangent. Uh, this is a five dollar note from this series. Again, we used to have money that looked like this. Seriously. Um, I also really amazed by the bill because really all you all you need is to put some explosions in the background and a line of names across the bottom, and this is a movie poster. Really, that's all you need to do. United States. Go to go to fly forward. Um, but in this one, of electricity striding forward, holding up what at first I thought was a chicken drumstick. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's actually a light bulb, like a lot of But she's holding this up and declaring electricity to be the dominant power uh, throughout the country. It's very uh, sort of force of progress and kind of thing. Uh, she's also Uh, and some people got really excited about it, particularly in the uh, more uh, upper class uh, circles around Boston in the back bay, uh, were to scandalize that the, the treasury of their own government could produce something so longer as this. Uh, and it's such a thing about this that banks around Boston refused to accept this note as positive. They would not take American money to, to deposit in their account because they're, they're just, uh, because of the scandal. And eventually the Treasury Department started working on uh, what we would now think of as a bug fix, which is just a revision of this, uh, of this illustration to the notion that we're over to be more decent and then carry on. Uh, but they waited too long uh, to address it. Yeah, it's actually damaging people from the scandal that's literally hurting. 
even 20 years ago. Nobody remembers this thing. And that's why we have one that looks like this. Hold on. So, I just my hair. So then we want to uh, another
Hopefully there will be 